what, in your opinion, is so important about the Zivotofsky case, and why did you choose to take it on? The Zivotofsky case, I didn't have any idea when we brought it. Right. We, the truth is we were called by a member of Congress after the bill was enacted. And the member of Congress said to me, the president, both with regard to the uh, the embassy being moved to Jerusalem and this provision regarding the passports, he said, the president is refusing to enforce it. I want to bring a lawsuit in my name to f force him to comply with these statutes, which we just enacted. And I said, you don't have standing. Under the, under the cases, a congressman cannot bring a lawsuit because he votes for a law and says the president is not following the law. And he said, well, who does have standing? I said, well, with regard to the last provision, somebody who's born in Jerusalem and they will not make, give, allow him to have his passport say Israel. He said, well, do you know anybody like that? Well, you didn't have to be born after the law. You could have been born before the law. And as a matter of fact, my mother-in-law, Lea Shalom, who passed away last year, she was born in Jerusalem, and her passport had said Palestine, more recently said Jerusalem. But I didn't think it was appropriate to bring the case for her but my daughter knew of, and was a classmate of, Naomi Zivotofsky, who was then pregnant and about to have a child. And she talked to the Zivotofskys, who agreed to be the plaintiffs in the case. And they went to the embassy, they took the steps of asking that the passport say Israel, they were turned down, and Menachem Benjamin Zivotofsky, at a very young age, not even one year old, became our firm's youngest pro bono client that way. But I didn't have any idea that the case was gonna to go to the Supreme Court at that point. I thought it was important as a matter of principle to vindicate this right, particularly because a congressman had asked. There are some who view this case along political lines, and they say that it, it's important that the Supreme Court rule on the Zivotofsky side because it's important for the United States to make a political statement that Jerusalem is, the, is, the, is Israel. But your daughter's argument at the Supreme Court was along constitutional grounds. Um, how do you view this, this relationship between Congress and the President as far as the execution of foreign policy? In, in, in whose court does, does that power reside? Well, I think it is very important for Israel and the Jewish people for the Congress to really have the ultimate authority in this country. And for the president not to be able to say, I have exclusive authority, certainly not over recognizing a foreign government, or even with regard to matters of foreign policy. The fact is, Israel's best friends in the United States are Congress, not the president and the White House. And if it weren't for the pressures from the Congress, I don't know what presidents, and I don't only mean the current president, but past presidents in our lifetime would have done if they didn't know that Congress would be very, very critical if they did not support Israel. So I think this case is important in establishing that the president cannot simply say, I can ignore Congress and do what I like in the area of foreign policy or in the area of recognizing foreign sovereigns or anything like that.